some part of me that thinks if I can help Kajal out of the dark, maybe. Let's take her. No! Please, help me. You met Dr. Wang over 10 years ago, and uh, Sight went from a book by Dr. Wang to screenplays, COVID delays, and finally production in Vancouver for about three or four years. On top of all that, there must have been challenges with pitching a movie that centered on an Asian lead character. This is a project that has such a ma massive scope, and to take someone's life and try to uh, bring it into a 90-minute 100-page uh, script took a tremendous amount of time, effort, but the most important thing was trying to capture the actual lens of the story itself through Dr. Wang and what he experienced. Right. Very, very important to us. Darren, Dr. Wang was on the set for much, if not all, of the shooting, about six weeks. Was that a help or, in a way, kind of a, a hindrance? Uh, you know, David was the Ming whisperer. That's what I, that's what I called David. Uh, but, you know, we wrestled through whether we were going to do uh, all the flashbacks in Mandarin. And when we landed on Mandarin, uh, he was the ultimate resource uh, because clearly David and I do not speak Mandarin. Uh, and so... It's a shock. Yeah. And then also, obviously, he grew up in China. So from a production design perspective, he was incredibly helpful. So uh, he's been a great partner uh, all the way through this. And besides that, cast members, crew members, uh, and other folks uh, benefited from uh, having an eye doctor on, uh, on set. <laughs> Free it was, advice. It was extraordinary. We actually found that there were crew members and cast members that were lining up to talk to Dr. Wang about their medical situations. <laughs> uh -huh. And he would happily actually do con consultations throughout uh, each of our days. It was it was kind of amazing. So he was working uh, but I But I have to interrupt because yes, sure. Dave and I are still wearing glasses. <laughs> so uh, there's something wrong with this. I'm just saying. Me too. I have to get, I have to get in line with Dr. Wang. Yes. All right. right Darren, us. the uh, central story is about Dr. Wang and the most dramatic event in sight has to do with a girl in Calcutta who is blinded by her own stepmother. It is suggested in the promotional material uh, that Dr. Wang is a miracle man who helps to restore her eyesight, but that didn't actually happen. So you worked out a way to redefine what a miracle could be. Well, I think the story is really about uh, Ming's miracle of coming to grips with what his past really meant to him and how he was able to overcome that. And really, uh, she was a big part of helping him get through what went on in his journey. So that's why we were so inspired to tell this story. What can you say about the industry realities that uh, compelled you to present Greg Kinnear as a co-lead? And in some places, I have seen him mentioned as the, uh, the, like the lead character. Well, I've worked with Greg before, and so when we were putting this movie together, I found out that Ming's favorite actor was Greg Kinnear. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, you know, we, we were in Vancouver, and I sent Greg a text, and I said, you know, it's, we've been through a year of COVID, and I said, are you working? And his response was, I haven't worked in a year. And I'm like, yeah, we got him. Uh, <laughs> uh, so then I just called him and sent him the script, and he fell in love with, with this story. Wow. And uh, there's another co-lead. David, how'd you come to cast uh, Terry Chen as uh, Dr. Uh, Wang? First off, uh, we hired a phenomenal casting director, uh, Kelly Roy and her team over at InGen. Um, when we had the opportunity to take a look at the people that they were bringing to the table, Terry jumped off the page for us because of Terry's particular engagement with this type of material. We knew that it was going to be important because we're dealing with someone who's living. So having Dr. Wang living and, and being able to kind of engage that, we knew that after the movie comes out, there's going to be press, there's going to be interviews, there's going to be things. We saw that Terry actually had this extraordinary ability to really enter into the person, and he did that. Terry, you must have felt really proud to be offered this uh, lead role. Uh, did you feel a burden at all in taking on a lead role in a major motion picture for pretty much the first time in your career of over 20 years? 
I wouldn't say I was burdened with it. It, it was an incredibly, has been an incredibly rare opportunity and, and quite terrifying actually to portray someone, you know, uh, living, but you sort of have to face those fears and, and realize that, you know, there's an important story to be told here. A lot of my, uh, the beginnings of the process was just spending as much time with Dr. Wang as possible, sharing stories and really just kind of creeping on him a little bit and watching his mannerisms and taking on physicalities and the voice and the intonation and whatnot. And then the emotional stuff comes after. But thankfully, he was there the whole time. And speaking of intonations and the voice, uh, did you also co create a kind of an accent to reflect Dr. Wang? I did. I did. Uh, when you hear Dr. Wang speak, you know, he's quite soft-spoken, but incredibly passionate about everything in his life. Um, and that was something that I wanted to try and emulate and bring authenticity to. But um, I found it easier just to sort of say in the accent during the whole shoot. And uh, David remembers Greg Kinnear being very generous on set with you, uh, giving up some lines even, because he felt that uh, this is Terry's scene. Uh, he helped us in so many ways. Is that what your experience was with Absolutely. him? Absolutely. Greg, Greg was incredibly generous with his time, with his talent, affable, you know, uh, completely approachable, um, and a great scene partner. You know, he, he was really there to service the story and, and, and to service Dr. Wang's uh, experience and, and try and tell it in an authentic way. All right, thank you, Terry. Uh, Dr. Wang, uh, you have to explain to us what's the thing you have for Greg Kinnear? I remember those early films, uh, Sabrina is one, and the other ones, I think so, as good as a guess, was uh, Jack Nicholson, Helen Hunter, and he was brilliant. And he was the next boy next door, yeah. so natural in his ability. So I just affected the natural acting, but yet being able to bring the different layers of feelings. So you liked him so much, you actually researched him and would, what, uh, go find his previous films on uh, Netflix or YouTube and look at them? Yes, I've seen almost all of his films. <laughs> uh, about um, this particular film, it is said that the movie is nearly 100% based on fact, although I heard recently that uh, Lili is a composite of two girls uh, in your youth in China. Uh, what about your visions of her at critical moments? Uh, you actually experienced all of that? Yeah, I was very much uh, stuck in my past the first many years after I came to America uh, as a poor student with only $50, 1982. So I was stuck in my past, the loss of Lily and the suffering during Cultural Revolution uh, plagued me. Um, but in a very interesting way, it also inspired me. And I felt like if I could save these kids, blind orphan children's life and bring them out of darkness in some illogical way, I might be to bring Lily out of hers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. David, you know, uh, we were talking today about uh, this whole topic, and uh, uh, it's interesting to know that uh, you had a difficult time casting young Asian actors to portray the Cultural Revolution. Uh, what were they thinking? What, 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 were, what were their uh, trepidations? What were their fears? I, I believe a lot of what was coming up was twofold. One, it was very important for us to find Mandarin speaking from mainland China um, actors. Yes. And that, that, that gave in and of itself a little bit of trepidation. But actually approaching the topic itself, figuring out how to, um, it's, a, it's a very real thing when you get on board with any kind of a story. And this story does touch on topics that are difficult. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it takes courage. To, to step up, um, it takes teams around those actors, uh, your management team, your, your, your agencies, to get behind a project and actually help create something new. Um, this is, on, on, on many accounts, one of the first Chinese-American immigrant stories that's ever been put on the silver screen. And to be a part of that is, it takes courage. To, to, to step up and, and take that on. All right. Well, th this is an incredibly moving and ins inspirational and uplifting film, and I uh, am happy to hear that uh, your distributors, Angel Studios, have uh, placed it in over 2,000 movie theaters already. Uh, 
It uh, got a, a nice review in the New York Times and even better ones elsewhere. And uh, you're doing all right in the box office already in your first few days, correct? That's right. Yeah, we're you getting... You can brag. We're getting... Um, I, well, I don't want to brag too much. I want... I, you always want to do really good. Um, but we're up against a lot of, of big movies this weekend. But at the same time, for a little independent film like Sight, a biopic, um, first of its kind, we're already seeing numbers in the first two days north of $2 million in the box. That is fantastic for a film of our size. We hit number seven last night, and we're climbing. We're climbing. Thank God Barb Oheimer wasn't happening this, this year. Yes. Well, thank you all for being here, and thanks for the film. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you again. Thank Good you. Night. Thank Thanks you, guys. Thanks for coming.